quick testimony, man. Uh, kind of, kind of goes with squads. Kind of doesn't go with squads. But squads is all about relationships. Uh, who was a part of squads last semester when we did it in the spring? Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. The reason why we do squads pretty much is because we believe that Christianity without relationship is not Christianity at all. Um, you know, I guys I teach at the university, SEU, and uh, last semester a student asked me, he kind of, he was trying to be smart, but he was a good question. He was like, can you be a Christian and not go to church? Can you be a Christian and not go to church? What do you guys think about that? Can you be a Christian and not go to church? Hands. Um, Who says yes? You can't be a Christian and not go to church. Sheriff. Sure. I think you still can be not a functional one. Go ahead. I think you can still be a Christian. Okay. Explain that. <laughs> they have. I mean, there's a lot of elements you're missing. Mm -hmm. I think salvation is available for everybody if yeah. they can make it church or not. So you can be a Christian, accept Jesus, grow, uh, watch online, um, group chat with people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I think it's still not a functional Christian. Okay. Like living in their calling okay. or purpose, but still be a Christian. Cool. Cool. Do you want to add to that? Um, no, you said, you said the answer right now. You said... Um, you have to have a relationship with God and Christianity, that's what Christianity is, mm -hmm. to have a relationship with God and church doesn't really, I don't know how to say this, but you can go to church and not be having, not having a relationship with God, mm -hmm. just like being out of church and being Christian and having a relationship with God. That's a good point. Wow. That's a good point. Um... I think you can, like John John says, but I feel like you're not going to be able, like, I feel like fellowship and being a part of something and being around other people that influence you, I feel like it's very influential and I feel like you kind of need that because like what are you supposed to do if you're in the middle of a situation and you don't have anyone there, you know, you don't have anyone to come and be like, can you pray for me or can you help me? It's like you're kind of alone. Yeah, that's good. Like, echo, amen. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, those are good answers. I wish I would have had those answers. My answer was different. My answer to him was, well, yes and no. Because it depends what you mean by church. If by church you mean a building, then yes. You can be a Christian and not go to church. But if by church you mean community of people, fellowship of believers, yeah. That no, you cannot be a Christian and not be connected to a community of a fellowship of believers. That's good. Because Christian, Christianity in itself is a religion that only works in a group. The best analogy I can make it is that you can play basketball by yourself, but you can't play basketball by yourself. You can get a ball and you can go on the court and you can shoot. But that's not basketball, that's practice. Mm -hmm. uh, basketball requires more than one person. You can play dominoes by yourself. You can't play dominoes by yourself. That's for anybody who knows what dominoes is. <laughs> but you can't, you just can't. It's not something you can do by yourself. If you're gonna try and be a Christian by yourself, you need to call it something else. But it can't be Christianity. Because the two greatest commandments are love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. This does not work without relationship with people. Don't work. It's just, it's not Christianity. It's something else entirely different. We have to create a whole new name for it, but it's not what Jesus designed. It does not work outside of group. It does not work outside of community for a bunch of reasons, but we won't get into all that. But because of that, that's why we emphasize squads. That's why we emphasize small groups. Because like we said, you can come to a church and not have a relationship with God. We're going to do the best that we can from the pulpit to fix that. But you could also come to church and not have relationships with people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could also come to church and room full of 300 people and feel absolutely alone. Yeah. Like you're the only one there. Mm -hmm. And so while we can't force God down anyone's throat, we can be that friend. We can be that relationship. We can provide uh, that friendship. And then hopefully God can work through that friendship to impact that person's life. And so I was at Chick-fil-A uh, yesterday, and I'm pointing to Miriam, because I was at Chick-fil-A yesterday, me, 
John John and Pastor Edgar, and I don't know if you saw John John, but there was this kid behind us who had this shirt that said, many are called, but few are chosen. It was like a purple shirt with yellow letters. And uh, I just kept eyeing them, just kept eyeing them, just kept eyeing them. And, uh, and I've learned that sometimes the best God conversations don't happen with, can I tell you about Jesus? Sometimes it happens just with, you'll do a nice shirt. And then you see what God does. Mm -hmm. And so Pastor Edgar in the bathroom, I'm waiting for him to come out. You had just left. And then uh, I see him, I'm like, yo, dude, nice shirt. He's like, yeah, thanks, man. Hey, man, are you Pastor JJ? I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yeah, man, I went to this, this party you guys did. Uh, Miriam invited me. She was a friend of mine, and she'd been inviting me for weeks, and I kept saying no, and I came, and dude, dude I just gave my life to Jesus, and I was, and I was crying at the altar, and it was just insane, man, and I, and I think I'm going to come back. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, dude, come back, man. Come back. Actually, it's not the party. It was this past Wednesday. It was this. It was Mark preaching. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he was there. Uh, black kid. Cool dude. Jeffrey. 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 Okay, I, that's his name. Yeah. Jeffrey, that's right. And he was like, man, I don't really go to church, um, but when I went, I was just in tears, crying, because God did something in my life. And I'm like, mm -hmm. the power of relationship, you know, the power mm -hmm. of an invitation. I think I <laughs> The power of, uh, of uh, come sit with me, the power of uh, I'll be your friend, the power of uh, let's get to know each other, it can really have an impact that goes beyond that conversation. It can have an internal impact. Let's say mm -hmm. Jeffrey really gives his life to Jesus fully, completely, now his kids and that whole lineage now mm -hmm. is on their way to heaven because of a simple invitation. You know, we really don't see, you know, A, B, C, B, C, D, E, F, G, sometimes we just, we just got to do A. So for us, we feel like A is relationships. That's why we always say from the pulpit, uh, welcome home here at YX. We are a family. 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 That's so important. We're a family. We have to try and emphasize and stress that because uh, studies have shown that the number one reason why people come to church, uh, especially young people, young adults and teens, is not because of the great preaching. It's not because of the worship. And it's not because of the music. Anybody want to take a shot at it? Number one reason why someone comes to church? Because right. my friend grows. Because my friend grows. My friend grows. That's crazy. It's the number one reason. And so we need to put our efforts behind friendship and relationship. And it's not a new strategy. It was always Jesus' strategy. And so um, I believe uh, that relationship is where life change really happens. Mm -hmm. um, I love preaching. Preaching is my passion, my calling, my destiny. I enjoy it. I enjoy putting together sermons. I enjoy sharing them with you. Uh, I enjoy what God shows me in my time of preparation, but I had to come to a, a really humbling point in my life and in my ministry where I realized no matter how great my sermon is, <coughs> sermons don't change people. Mm -hmm. It's a reality. It sucks because I put so much time into it. <laughs> and, uh, and I know that there, you know, I, I put so much effort, so many hours, but sermons don't change people. People change people, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and relationships change people. So. So life change doesn't happen through a sermon. Life change happens in a conversation with somebody at Dunkin' Donuts. That's where life change happens, you know, at the ale house, after service, when we start to talk about life. That's where life change really, really happens. And so again, that's why we emphasize squads, small groups, because we feel that's where the transformation um, is gonna take place. And lastly, one of the reasons why we have to do this, because our youth ministry is too big. Our youth ministry really is too big. You can be too big. I've never been a part of a church this big before in my life, ever. I've always been a part of small churches and small youth groups. My first youth group was 10 students. It was in Brooklyn, New York, a little Spanish church. And all those people are still my best friends today. Today, I can call them up, say what's up, and we could go eat today. And it would be New York. We'll get together. Or we'll cry on the phone. I mean, those relationships were lifelong relationships. YX is, is pushing close to 500 students now. When you take young adults, middle school, and high school, that's a big group. For people to find meaningful relationships in there, mm -hmm. that's just not going to happen on its own. We need to be intentional about that. Yep. Um, and I know y'all all already have your circle of friends. Um, and I already know um, that, that there are people who are already in your life who you would consider. I'm not saying that you need to take these people out to the movies every Friday night. I'm not saying you need to call them every week. I'm just saying be a friend when you can. 
-hmm. You know, when you're there with you, share that love. You know, exemplify the love of Christ. Uh, because those relationships, knowing somebody's name, knowing somebody's name matters. I know that as a teacher, when I have a class with 40 students, it, I can tell the way a student feels when I go, Christina, and I can tell when a student feels when I go, yeah, you. <laughs> they know. He don't know my name, and that's why he don't. That's why he don't. Yeah, that's why he didn't say my name. And it's just like this. It's something. That something different happens when somebody walks in, and even though you don't have time for a conversation, they're going this way. You go this way. You go. Hey, what up, Robert? And you give him a dap, and you give him a hug. Or if it's a girl, you give him a kiss on the cheek. If you're a girl, and then you, you know, you keep going, and it's like something happens in that moment. Like he knows my name. You know, like he knows my name. That's huge, just to know people's name. And, uh, and, I'm, and, I, and I try my best, but I cannot memorize 500 names. So I need you to help me know people's names and say mm -hmm. hi by name when you see them. And so squads is all a part of that. If we can all learn 10 people's names, we got this. We got this. So um, I'm going to uh, do a little, I like acronyms. They're easy to remember. And uh, last time we had this training, we had an acronym. Today we have an acronym called SALLY. It is small group training one-on-one in an acronym. So if you're taking notes, uh, SALLY. SALLY is what we're gonna talk about. There's no way you can read this, it's okay. I'm gonna explain it to you, but, but you wanna write down SALLY if you're taking notes, okay? SALLY is a guideline for you on how to lead a squad. SALLY is a guideline for you on how to lead a small group. SALLY. Everybody say Sally. 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 Anybody know Sally? Mm -hmm. Cool people's? Good. Good to know. I know <clears throat> Sally. S A L L Y. You remember this, and you'll know everything that you need to know to lead a squad. And I say that because some people feel inadequate in leading a squad. You know, I'm not going to call anybody out, but. Gio had a conversation with John John. <laughs> but Gio had a conversation with John John and he was like, and he was like, <laughs> and he was like, hey man, I don't know that I'm ready. And you know, I just want to say to anybody who feels like that, first off, Gio, I'm glad that you shared that because there's a lot of people here today who probably feel the same way and say that. But I just want you to know, you don't need to learn Greek, Hebrew, uh, you don't need to know how to preach. You don't need to know all the Bible verses or even the Bible stories. You know, there's one character in the Bible you need to know. One person, Jesus. One person in the Bible, Jesus. If you know Jesus and you love Jesus, uh, you are qualified to do this. And when we picked you to be squad members, I want you to know that there were hundreds of names, but we picked you because we felt like you represent Jesus as best as any human being could represent Jesus. And so thank you for saying yes. But if we picked you, it's because we believe in you. And so somebody here uh, sees something good inside of you, we do. Uh, and so, so you are qualified. You are qualified because you love Jesus. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. And, and we think you love people. And so that's, that's it. So Sally, S, smile. Man, you can beat so much with your smile. You can warm up a room with your smile. Here's something I've learned about smiles. Smiles are contagious. Mm -hmm. I see right now, I see a lot of flat faces a lot of your horizontal lippage going on. And, uh, and if, I start, if I start smiling, and I start looking at you, and then it's just, you know, it's just a matter of time before you smile, and it's just, you just can't not respond to somebody's smile with a smile. And uh, a smile can warm an environment. A smile can warm up a small group. Uh, everybody's got garbage, everybody's got trash, everybody's got dirt. When you get into a small group, the first thing you think when you get in there is like, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna go too deep, I'm gonna go shallow, there's a lot of guards up. Smile sometimes can disarm mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. of those guards. Just a smile. And so work on your smile. You have to be intentional about your smile. Even if you have to fake it, fake it, but smile, okay? Because if you're having a bad day and you come into your group and your squad and you're not smiling, nobody else is gonna be smiling either. You're the leader. And so when you get in that group, you smile. Of course, smile when it is appropriate. 
Okay, and it is always appropriate. <laughs> it's always appropriate to smile unless somebody's breaking down. Then it's not appropriate to smile. Okay? You smile in this one, then when they start talking about their struggle and their battles, and you just can't be. <laughs> so you almost killed yourself last week. All right. Oh. <laughs> glad, glad you didn't. Glad you didn't see it through. You know. <laughs> Next. <laughs> you just can't be that way. So you gotta guard your, you gotta guard your, guard your smile. You gotta use it though. So it's the go-to. It's how you open every squad. Smile, okay? It's when you go around hearing people's stories. Smile, you know. Smile, 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 smile. You gotta practice it. You gotta do it. Um, it's just, it's, it's. There's just, I don't know. It's just power and smile, and it's simple. It's something you can do. And again, this is what I mean by it. you don't have to have it on a Bible college. It's a no to smile. And like you can do that, okay? And so it'll help other people. Uh, you'll see them smiling as you as you smile. All right. So if you want to change the atmosphere of your group, on, within two minutes, smile there. But they're either gonna smile back or or or, or leave. But I saw their smile. So smile that warm. And again, it's not just it's not just to look pretty, but it really is. It it changes the mood. It changes the atmosphere yeah. in the group. Uh, a advice is overrated because most of the time people know what they need to do. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. When you call somebody and you share your problems, you don't need, you just got, you know, just pray about that. You know, you just got to do this or do that. Most of the times you already know what you need to do. You're not there to give advice. Squads is not a time to give advice unless it's asked for. Okay? Mm-hmm. Advice, if it's asked for, then you give it. But you're really there to show compassion to show sincerity, and to listen. Uh, which, when I say advice is overrated, I also mean preaching is overrated. You're not there to preach either. The only thing that you'll get from us every week before you go to squads are the list of three questions, or two questions some weeks, so that you know ahead of time what, what we're gonna be asking. But you don't have to prepare notes, you don't have to prepare you know, a little mini message on the message, you don't have to get your Bible stories lined up, nothing. Just and that's good news for you because that will take time that you don't have. It's just a matter of, of not preaching or, or giving advice if it's not solicited, if it's not wanted. Don't give it because uh, they're not there for that, you know, unless, they, unless they're asking you or it's one of those moments of real brokenness and, and you can kind of feel it by the Spirit. I need to say this. Then say it, but there's no pressure on you to say it because advice is overrated. Most times people know what to do. Uh, but listening, L, is underestimated. Listening is underestimated. Smiles warm, advice is overrated, listening is underestimated. The power of listening is greatly underestimated. I don't know who said it first, but I know a pastor told me, uh, God gave you one mouth and two ears for a reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, You are supposed to listen more than you are supposed to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, Listening in your squads is gonna be your biggest challenge. Because how many of you know it's hard to listen sometimes? Mm hard to listen. There's a bunch of reasons why it's hard to listen. Uh, one of the reasons, because sometimes with people talking, it's just, it's just nonsense. It's just what they're saying. You're like, I'm trying. I'm really trying. <laughs> well, you are all over the place, bro. You started when you were two, and now you're 20, and I don't even know what's going on. I can't follow you. But you know, another reason is because we get distracted easily. Mm-hmm. Um, another reason is because halfway through what they're saying, we already have an answer. And so we stopped listening to them because we're just waiting for them to stop speaking so we can give our answer. Oh, wow. But remember that advice is overrated and listening is underestimated. So you're not there to give answers. How many people have ever been in a conversation like that? Where, where you, you, the person is talking to you and you're like, I know exactly what I need to say. <laughs> they only said like 10 words. But you're like, I got this. <laughs> block it all out. And block it all out. And then as soon as you get a second, boom, you, you vomit your advice. And it's like, no, listen, listen. And by listening, I mean active listening. Active listening. There's a difference between passive listening and active listening. Best example of that would be my wife trying to tell me anything while I'm watching football. It doesn't work, okay? It's passive listening. She sits on the couch, she have a whole conversation with me, and I'll be like, "Mm mm-hmm, yep, Mm mm-hmm, yep, Mm mm-hmm, yep. And then 30 minutes, she'll come back and she'll be like, why are the kids' bottles not in the not in the fridge? Or how come the trash is thrown out? I'm like, you never told me that. And she's like, yeah, I did. You were right there. You said, mm-hmm, and yeah. And so now we have a thing where she, when I'm not, I don't get offended at it. She tells me, can you pause the TV, please? 
So then I pause the TV and I look at her and then I hear what she says and that's active listening. <laughs> that's active listening. You can't multitask listening. That's the truth. You cannot multitask listening. You can't. Uh, you can't multitask anything really, but that's another thing for another day. But you can't multitask listening. So active listening involves three things. So this is great for you, not just for leading squads, but great marriage advice, great relationship advice for you. Whenever you get in a relationship, if you're in one right now, the person that you're with is going to want you to listen actively, okay? So here's three things that help you listen actively. One, you got to remove distractions. I don't care what you came in with, you got to leave that at the door. You cannot have any distractions while you're listening, okay? You know when you got drama going on in your life and you can't even hear what the other person's saying because the echo and the noise of all the drama or you got tons of stuff to do when you get home, homework assignments, work, you know, just to clean your room, a whole bunch of stuff, and you just can't even focus because you got all the distractions. Active listening requires, first and foremost, removing distractions. You got to remove distractions. You got to get to the place where you're focusing on, on, on one thing, okay? This is hard for everybody. Um, it's hard for everybody, guys or girls. It, it's a little harder for girls because girls have an ability to think of 20 things at one time. It's just a skill. That God gave you, I think. Um, maybe the devil, I don't know who gave it to you, but you think, and it's hard. Sometimes you try to go to sleep and you can't even go to sleep because you got 20 things on your mind. And so, guys, that happens with us too. You gotta block all that out. You gotta block all that out and you gotta focus. Squads are gonna last 30, 40 minutes max. Can you focus for 30, 40 minutes? That's key. Can you focus for 30, 40 minutes? Two, listen to signs and sounds, aka what she's not saying. You got to listen to what she's not saying, okay? So a lot of times people speak, but in their tone or with their hands or with their silence even, they're saying more than what they're saying. And so you got to listen to what they're saying, but you also got to listen to what they're not saying. Active listening doesn't just hear their voice. It hears their facial expressions. It hears their gestures. It hears their... Their their size in between, you know. Yeah. It hears the, you know, what I mean, um, yeah, you know. It hears all of that and it puts together a picture based on what the person is uh, is, is saying. You know, we were having a conversation with your mom, I think, the other day, and she's she gave us one of those Spanish phrases that, uh, oh yeah, qué te pasa? Qué te pasa in Spanish is like, like what's what's wrong, you know. But depending on how you say it, it means totally different things. There's, ¿qué te pasa? Like, what's wrong? And then there's, ¿qué te pasa? Which is like, dude, what's your problem? You know, like, we understand that tone and speed and facial expressions, all that communicates more than just the words themselves. So you got to pay attention to that, read into that. And then once we read into that, feedback. Listening does require speaking, but not advice of speaking. Listening requires feedback in the sense of, okay, so what you're saying is, da, 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 da. And the person will either say, no, that's not what I mean. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, okay, so then elaborate. Uh, wh where did I miss it? Or it means, yes, that's exactly what I mean. Man, you understand me. That's crazy. Nobody ever understands me. Yeah, I understand you, man. I understand you. So when somebody shares, right when they're still sharing, I want you to confirm what they just said. Okay? To prove that you were listening. So what you're saying is, growing up in a Hindu home with no one in the faith has been a challenge for you because nobody can relate to you and nobody's there to counsel you when you need counseling. That's exactly what I'm saying. All right. That's an actual conversation that happened in my wife's small group um, when she did it this last semester. Um, uh, for a kid who got saved at an Andrew night, uh, his whole family's Hindu, and he's the only one who decided to follow Christ. The only one. Him and his girlfriend. You guys probably know him. Um, but uh, crazy. And so he, he started just crying, right? He got a little emotional. When he was sharing that? Okay, he got a little emotional. So I need to listen better. Um, he got a little emotional. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and when he was sharing that, because it's hard. Like that's, and then you feedback. And then maybe ask him to elaborate. You know, ask him to go deeper. Share, you know, don't ask. We don't, all the questions are designed to not be closed-ended, which means they can't be answered in one word. Every question that we design is specifically geared for a longer explanation. But if they try and give you a short answer, go deeper, you know. Say, okay, so I understand this. So, well, what do you mean by that? And then kind of take it. So that's that feedback, okay? And listening is underestimated. 
Love. Before I go into love real quick, I just want to say this is not something you do because you're a small group leader. This is something you do because you're a Christian. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah, when I say these things, you're going to be like, dang, that's not a work. That's why I didn't want to be a squad leader. Like, no. This is what you do because you're a Christian. Like, everything I'm going to tell you here is what you do because you love Jesus and because you love people. Not because you're a squad leader. Whether you're a squad leader or not, you do these things. It's just, it's just what it means. It's just love. It's just your faith. Okay? L is love. Love. What I mean by that is be compassionate. Okay? You don't want someone to share something powerful or emotional and then you just not show any facial expression whatsoever. Some stuff is so heavy, you're not even going to know how to respond. they will be like, they didn't prepare me for this. <laughs> I did not know that was going to happen. <laughs> this is not on salad. This is not on salad. No. This was not. This is not on salad. No. When those moments happen, sometimes you just need to say, man, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I, 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 man, that must, that sucks. That's your answer. Why? Because their advice is all They just want to be felt. They just want to know that they're heard. So if someone tells you something crazy, you just be like, dang, dude, that sucks, man. I feel you. If, if, if you went through something that they went through, you can have an even better answer, which is, me too. Mm-hmm. Me too. That's some of the, sometimes it's one of the best answers you can ever get somebody who's struggling with their faith or doubt or going through a hard time with their mom or dad. It's, man, me too. Me too. We got together as a leadership two weeks, a month ago, and we all had things that were going on in our lives crazy stuff that were going on in our lives. And as a pastor, I feel the pressure to pastor that or lead that or counsel that or take my leadership team to another level, help them find deliverance. But in that moment, the best advice I could give my team was help me too. This is what I'm going through with my wife. This is what I'm going through at home. This is what I'm going through with my kids. And me too. And together as a group, we get closer and, and the love grows and the, 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 the relationship grows. And sometimes the best advice you can give is man, me too. You don't have to preach them. Just, I feel you, or, man, me too. That's compassion, that's love. That's sensitivity. Be real, love is authentic. Don't be fake. Don't ever say you're gonna do something and not do it. And don't ever say something you don't mean. Mm-hmm. Be real, people can sense fakeness. And the last one, love is a verb. Love is a verb. What does that mean? If there's a need in your small group, and you, and you know that you can meet that need, why don't you meet it? I encourage you to meet that need. You know, like let's say someone in a group says, man, it's been hard, man. My fridge is empty. My fridge is empty at home. If you have the money, only if you can, say, man, let's go to Publix after church. Like, I'll pick you up on Saturday. We'll get some food for you, dude. Or, or there's a food bank here at the church. Let, let me talk to somebody. We'll get you some, which we do have a food bank here at the church. Let me get you some. A love is a verb. There should be some type of action attached to love. Love is not a noun. People say, I feel love. I feel love. You don't feel love. You do love. Love is a verb. That's why when you go to 1 Corinthians 13 and Paul defines love, he says love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It is not rude. It is not proud. It is not self-seeking. It is not easy to anger. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in sin, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Everything in that verse is a verb. Everything in that verse is a verb. It's about acting and doing. So I encourage you to not let small group be about just all talk. If there's an opportunity, now we don't all have resources, we don't all have jobs, we don't, not all, we don't all have money, but sometimes a verb doesn't require money. Sometimes it can be something simple, like a ride somewhere, you know, or a, or a letter. So, uh, something, but know that love is a verb. So I encourage you to act, not because you're a squalid, but because you're a Christian. Mm-hmm. And lastly, you, or why, and it stands for you. Sally, smile, advice is overrated, listening is underestimated, love, and why stands for you. What I mean by that is, number one, it's not about you, mm-hmm. the students are the focus. Mm-hmm. Do not get up in your small room and be like, the day I had today, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> No, I'm not saying that you need to have your group that you get with, your friends that you can do that with, but not as, as squads. You can't do that as squads. You do that with your group, but not as squads. It's not about, it's about students. 
we got to get them focused and, and, and put them. And second, it's not about you. Jesus is the hero. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the hero. Jesus is the hero. You are not the hero. Jesus is the hero. And so you don't have to save nobody. Jesus saves people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always bring the conversation back to Jesus. Always bring the conversation back to Jesus. We're not psychologists. We're not counselors. We are Christians. We are ministers. I tell people all the time, my strength is not psychology. Do I have to know a little bit of it to sit down and counsel people? Yes. But I don't, I'm not going to go into your child history and your path, that's not my field. Here's my field, Jesus. That's who I am, that's what I do, that's my life, and I believe he, he, he is the answer. And so I'm gonna bring, bring you back to Jesus. There might be some situations where you need to see a psychiatrist, where you need to see a counselor. I'm, I recommend that to you if you come into my office, if I feel like this is not just spiritual, but this is maybe mental. And so we'll, we'll, we'll combine those two, but Jesus, just always bring the conversation back to Jesus, because Jesus is the hero. You are not uh, a hero. <laughs> let's, get, let's get into the administrative side of it then, okay? This is what you need to know administratively as a, as a squad leader. We, can, we we got to record this part here. Is it recording? Got it. Oh, it's recording? Yeah. Okay, sweet. <laughs> so here's what we need to know. Um, you will be the ones presenting the questions in your, in your squads. In the past, I would say the questions from the stage. The preacher's not going to say the questions anymore. You will share the question. The first time they hear the questions will be from you. The questions will, will go from easy slash funny to just get people talking to more serious. So for example, the three questions that we have this week are, and this is actually your time to write these down, I guess. Yeah, so you like either pull out your notebook or your cell phone. Yeah, these are the three questions for this Wednesday because this Wednesday is our first squad night. This Wednesday is our first squad night. So go ahead, uh, Pastor John. Come over a little closer here so that they can catch you. Gotcha. So, first question is, you're on a deserted island. You can only bring three items. What do you bring? I don't know why. Whenever we were like in a group of people and they asked that question, it was always a lot. Yeah. We try to make that first question as close to the theme of the message as possible. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be talking about purpose this Wednesday. And so hopefully those items will say a little bit about what, what you feel like your purpose is. Gotcha. Second question is, what would it feel like to be on planet Earth with no purpose, with no reason to live? What would it be like? And a follow-up question is, have you ever felt that way? Like, have you ever sat in your bed at night, looked at your ceiling, and thought to yourself, what is life? That was an example. That was an actual question. But what would it feel like to be on planet Earth with no purpose? And the follow-up question is, have you ever felt that way? We'll, we'll have these for you guys on one day as well. But yeah. Third question is, how does having a purpose change the way you live your life? How does having a purpose change the way that you live your life? And also on the questions, I'm gonna have like some pointers and like some examples and little things that help you to understand the question a little bit better. And then one last question, if you have time in your squad, is what are some creative things that we could do to raise money for missions? Because we're gonna start emphasizing speed of light again, and we're gonna be pushing it, so that'll be a follow-up question if you have enough time in your squad. Thanks, PJ. No problem. You'll get those again on Wednesday, paper. So those will be the questions. We are also gonna be running our events for squads, so if we have an event that's coming up, um, we're going to try and, and have the volunteers for that event be squads and squad leaders in their squads. What we didn't have last year, that we the last semester that we have this semester, are assistant squad leaders now. We have assistant squad leaders. So what that means is we had situations where a squad leader couldn't make it because just whatever, life happens. So now we have four or five backups, assistant squad leaders that you can contact. or And actually, Selena. Anybody not know Selena? Okay. Don't know Selena? Okay. We'll get you in contact with Selena. Um, Mel will send out her information. Um, and our next Friday meeting, can you remind me of that? 
I need to, to tell Melanie to send Selena's number to everybody in the squad. So Selena is our squad coordinator. She essentially is gonna be the person you call if you ever can't make it, and she's gonna get a backup squad leader for you. She's gonna get a backup squad leader for you. So some of you here are backup squad leaders, you're gonna be used, because there was never a Wednesday where all of our squad leaders came. So you'll jump from squad to squad, but you'll be the backup squad leader. We're also separating squads this year, not by numbers. Last semester was so confusing. You have one, two, three, four, and it's like people running around, five, and you don't know who they are. And so what we did this year was we just did straight up by school. Just straight up by school, college, just did just like that. So depending on what school you go to, what college you go to, we have it all together that way. So you're gonna be the squad leader of a school, okay? And we are limiting the group to 10 people. 10 people each in each squad, which means that if 15 people show up to your squad, you need to get the other squad leader of your school and be like, hey, can we split here? You take five and you gotta do that, okay? So you got to only limit to 10. Some of you guys are very charismatic and you're gonna have a bunch of people who wanna be a part of your squad. You have to resist that temptation to, to start a church, okay, like that. <laughs> and if you can't have, 20 people in your squad. You, it just, because no, not everybody will get the chance to share. Yep. Not everybody will get the chance to share, not everybody will get the chance to speak, and not everybody the chance to open up, and that's the whole point, to be small. So we limit it to 10. So you have to be a little authoritative, a little aggressive even in the, I mean, if you're at 11, 12, that's one thing. But if you're at 16, 17, nah, you gotta, we need to split, we need to divide, or anything like that, okay? So you gotta, you gotta remember that. If you can't make it on a night, call Selena. If you can't make it on a night, call Selena. We'll get you her number. Call Selena, she will find a backup for you. If you can't get a hold of Selena, get a hold of Mel. If you can't get a hold of Mel, um, you should always be able to get a hold of Mel. If but in due time as well, in due time. Yeah. We'll tell mm -hmm. us Wednesday. Yeah, you, if you tell us on Wednesday, it's gonna be a challenge. So please let us know. Uh, unless it's an emergency, then those happen last minute. But if you know that you know you can't make it, and you will know, because I'm about to give you the dates right now, we only do squads in semesters, and we have only three this semester. So from now to December, we only have three. And these are the dates. September 23rd, which is this Wednesday. September 23rd. I'm write that down. September 23rd. October 21st. October 21st. I'm write that down, October 21st. And December 2nd. That's it. We got three squads for the whole year. Then we take a break, and then we do squads again the next semester. December 2nd. Now, the December 2nd one is actually really unique. The September 23rd and the October 21st is, you know, sit down squads, get and talk deep. December 2nd is actually gonna be a squad battle night. And so we're actually gonna have games, and each squad is gonna run up against other squads and like carnival type games or like other stuff. So it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be fun. A time of just hanging out and fellowship and we'll do that all service on Wednesday night. So squad battle night, December 2nd. It'll be a, a battle night slash like Christmas party type thing. So it'll be a little mixture of it all. Also, um, we are, this is the only thing outside of squads that we ask you guys to do. And if, there, and if you can do this, it will make all the world the difference. We would like for you to get together in a semester, just twice, with your squad outside of church. If you can get together with the people in your squad outside of church twice in three months. That's what, that's what we're asking. And by that we mean some type of hangout somewhere, a movie night, uh, bowling, uh, park, uh, basketball, um, going to the mall, uh, going out to eat, uh, something, anything. And what we'll do is we'll do it together by schools and you wanna tell the people in your squad to invite their friends. So it'll be an opportunity to be evangelistic. Because a friend might not come to church, but a friend will come to the movies. You know, and a friend will come to the park. And a friend will come to, um, you know, to, to the mall or something like that. This is huge because this is an opportunity for squads to be evangelistic. This is an opportunity for squads to, to, to be the gospel, to be Jesus in the flesh outside. We always try and get people to church, and that's great. Andrew Knight's all about that, and it works. 
but, if, but if people might not come to church, we can get them to come to these events. And so they don't have to be elaborate, they don't have to cost money. It's just straight up chill time, just chill time. You get with your squad and you say, hey, I'm going to the movies on Friday night. I'm watching 7.30 Ant-Man or 7.30 Paper Towns or 7.30 whatever. Come with me. Anybody who wants to come with me, I'll be there and invite a friend. This is my number. Hit me up if you want to come. It's like that. Just like that. And so it's incorporating them in your hangout time uh, and telling them, please invite others. This is our opportunity to, to show people what YS is all about and show people that we're all about relationships and family here. Okay, so we ask that you do that just twice, just two times. You can do it whenever you want, just twice from here to the end of December, two times to hang out uh, with your group outside of, uh, of this. So we really feel like that's where that's where this really thing hits. hits that's where it makes it. What do you mix squads for some of those chills? Yeah, some of them are smaller groups. Some of these groups are smaller groups, <coughs> so we're gonna have to uh, get together. So it's never just be your squad. It'll always be your squad and another squad coming together. We felt like if we had two squad leaders together for an event, it'd be a better turnout and a better chance that it happens. So we're gonna we're gonna combine those. So you can, and here's how we'll do it. We're just gonna, you can combine it with whoever you wanna combine it with. Just talk to another squad leader and do it together, okay? But we wanna get together. Squad leaders want to get together to do these. So thank you. WhatsApp, is everybody on WhatsApp? Okay, if you're not on WhatsApp, text Melanie, and she's gonna put you on WhatsApp. Does that mean not have Melanie's number? Let me give you Melanie's number right now. Melanie's number is... Melanie's number is 407 8806. 407 8806. 407 Three two two eight 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 six. That's Melanie. Three two two eight 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 six. Three twos and three eights and one six. 407 two 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 eight 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 six. Okay. Text her right now and tell her this is Zara. What your name is? And put me in WhatsApp. Thank you. Download the app first. And download the app. Yeah. Get it downloaded first. Download the app first. WhatsApp is free. It's the way that we communicate with all our squad leaders. So like today there's been, this WhatsApp app looks like that. And today we've been already communicating on all the squad leaders have been talking. So get on get on that app and that will communicate with all the squad leaders. And they can see if you read the message and didn't reply. Yep. Wow. Wow. Like iPhone yeah. stuff? Yeah. Red, no, but it's red. Yeah, red. No, WhatsApp is on everything. On Android It's on everything. But they can see if you read it and you didn't reply. If you read it and you didn't reply, we can see that. I don't have an iPhone for this reason. <laughs> so get on WhatsApp, text mail, and say that you're in. But you gotta download the app first. You gotta download the app first. And lastly, lastly, and then we'll go into Q&A, and I'll, I'll give you guys your squads. Lastly, um, every at the end of every squad, before you close, I need you to give some type of emphasis towards Speed of Life. Here's the deal. We've raised $11,000 so far for Speed of Life. You know what Speed of Life is? Speed of Life is a ministry that helps raise money for missionaries all over the world. Our, gospel. Our goal was over thirty, So we need $20,000 in three months. We got together as a leadership this uh, past Friday and tried to brainstorm what we could do to raise money for missions. And so this Wednesday, we're gonna make a really big announcement, and this is the announcement. If we can raise $20,000 in three months, PJ, John John, Melanie, and myself are going to dye our hair platinum blonde. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> if we can raise $20,000 for missions in... <laughs> <laughs> So I'm getting old. <laughs> 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 and we can raise $20,000 in missions. Well, this is almost there. She's almost there. Well, she's not part of it. Melanie is. She won't have a problem. But she wouldn't have a problem with right it. She's been wanting to dye her hair platinum. This would be a good excuse for you to dye your hair platinum. <laughs> but PJ, myself, <laughs> and uh, wow. even though. Here, here. It was my idea. It was my idea, though. I was like, yes. <laughs> How long? How long you got to have it like that? 
a couple weeks, two, three weeks, whatever. But still, oh, did you ask Pastor Nino? You know how hard it is to get rid of them. It's really hard to get rid of them. Did you ask Pastor Nino yet? I haven't. Just show us the next episode. I have that conversation with them, I guess, when I have it. Uh, yeah, so also the wife oh, yeah. benefit concert. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll make an announcement on that. We're just sure about the squads. That's, that's a big deal. No, but I told you. So, so, yeah, so what we want is we need you to make that announcement at the end of every squad. Like, guys, can we get together and do something? Are y'all doing something individually? We need to raise this money. If every student were to raise $100, in three months, for just three months, $100, we would hit 20. We hit over that. We have over 200 students. And so 100 times 200 is 20,000. We have over that. So it's really three months to raise $100 per person. The math, break it down. But if we do that, we'll, we'll do that. And, um, and uh, yeah. So 100 times 10. So minus one, we would have like $1,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you could do a thousand dollars for your squad. Uh, but we want to encourage them to give every week either, every week also. And uh, we're going to be tracking their information. So I think Melanie was going to talk to you, Miriam. Has she talked to you already? Yeah, I spoke to her yesterday. Yeah, that's awesome. So we would love for you to be kind of that coordinator, just tracking the giving so that every week, everybody knows what they've given, every squad knows what they've given. And then uh, we're going to have a speed of light king and queen. So whatever guy and girl raises the most money, we're going to pay to send them to Universal Studios. We're going to do that as a squad, but the squad's changed. So we couldn't do that as a squad anymore. So we're doing it as individuals. So whichever guy and girl raises the most also, we're gonna give them a, a paid trip to whatever theme park they, they wanna go to, Universal, uh, Disney, or whatever. We're gonna pass for them as well. And we have the YX Benefit Concert. We're gonna be doing a YX worship night. We're gonna be charging $20 at the door just because we wanna raise money for missions. Anybody who comes, $20, that also goes to Speed of Light as well. It'll be a worship night. So we got a whole bunch of stuff planned. But you wanna you wanna be help me be that voice, help me be that voice. And when we make the announcement on Wednesday night, we'll see what happens. People get excited. Um, but yeah, so, so that's everything, man. That's everything with squads. Uh, I wanna answer. Oh, any questions aside from what squad you're in? I'm gonna show that right now. Any other questions? Are you gonna give us um, I know last time like everyone had the number of all the people in their squads, do we have that? You're gonna have we're not doing it by numbers anymore. We're doing it by school. No, no, no. I mean, like, your phone numbers. numbers. Oh! Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. We just passed around. Because last time, I remember, like, the squad leaders, they had everyone come in their groups, like, they could meet yeah. Like, yeah, but my, my squad changes every week, so I would kind of consistently ask people's numbers. That's a good question, though. We should probably add squad before it's over, and nobody exchange numbers. Yeah, or create a group text, and then have everybody in that group text if you have yeah. it, something like that. Create a group text, or even you could start another group on WhatsApp. You can ask everybody to download the app. You can create a group, and it could be a squad group, and you can add everybody in that. But we would probably say you would, that would mostly be on the squad leader to get okay. everybody's number. And the, the reason why we did that last time was because a part of the requirements of being a squad leader was calling okay. everybody in your squad every week. But it just was so hard, we took that requirement out. So you don't have to call them every week. Okay. Um, just kind of let the relationships develop organically. But we do want to have that one hangout which would help if you had numbers. So yeah, if you could get that in your groups, that'd be great. Okay. So, for result for the questions, we're going to uh, go down this list. Um, if you have like five schools, don't be intimidated. What that means is that there's not enough students that go to these schools, NYX, so we had to merge them. Okay, that's what that means. So uh, Brenda has got Boone, Chancery, Colonial, and University High School. D, you've got Cypress. Geo, you've got Dr. Phillips, Edgewater, and Okoye High School. Uh, you're gonna have a sign that says Dr. Phillips. All you guys are gonna have signs that say what they are so that people will come to you when they're there. Miriam, you've got Freedoms. Yashira, you've got Freedom. John, you've got Gateway. Daniel, he's got Heritage, Jones High School, Lake Howell, Julie, IEC Christian, Lake Nona, Life Christian Academy, Hey Mosaic, Julio, Liz, and Jaisa. You guys have Mosaic. Mosaic means that you are either like a homeschooled kid 
Or you go to a private school that is so small that you're like the only one at YX that goes there. And so it's it's another way to say miscellaneous without saying miscellaneous, because nobody likes to be miscellaneous. And so mosaic is actually, have you ever seen stained glass windows? Yeah. And so you know the pieces? Whenever you take pieces of something, put it together to make a picture, that that, that is a mosaic. And so that's what we call these groups. A mosaic group is a hodgepodge mixture of private schools and home schools that are really small. Um, and so you, if, you, if you belong to one of those three, you can go to any one of those three. Uh, Gordy, Oak Ridge, Moises, Oak Ridge, Selena, Oak Ridge, Philly. You've got Osceola High School, Osceola Christian Prep, and Osceola School of Arts. Again, that's not a lot of students. That's why we jam them together. Okay. So it's around maybe eight or nine students you have in your squad. Raz got Quincy Anna High School. Armando's got young adults. Hector's got young adults. Lay, you have young adults, which we decided not to do the colleges by college because we, we realized the barrier between high school students getting together with other high school students is most don't have cars. But college students, you can drive anywhere, you can get to know. So if I make a relationship in my young adult group with another young adult, he might go to Valencia, I might go to UCF, but it'll make a difference because I can connect with him whenever. And so we have young adults are gonna be there. Uh, and there's three, y'all. So even if you wanted to get your do your hangout time, you can do them with these people. Do you know who Armando is? I don't. Hector? Nisha's brother. I know Hector. So Hector. So you and Hector can get together. Hector knows Armando. Okay. Or you can all do something together and, and, and have a hangout time. Uh, and then our assistants that are here, Arlene, Jonathan Rosa, Catherine, Crystal, Naudi. You guys are, are the backups. And every Wednesday, there's somebody who cancels. So every Wednesday, you'll probably have a have a squad. Uh, if not, just join the squad. Just jump in whichever one you want to uh, for that week. Uh, but uh, if, if you... Uh, if you're not leading one, then either Shalino or Melanie will tell you, hey, this person canceled, you need to lead this group, come get this signed. Uh, this is really gonna be a help for us because some, a lot of Wednesdays, we would have to merge groups and we'd have these big 20 people groups because a leader canceled last minute. So you guys are stepping in to help whenever a group uh, cancels. So your challenge is, you're gonna have a different group every week, but it's just to keep the conversation going for you guys. Any question on this? So if me and Miriam have freedom, for example, and we both have sides, do we just get everyone and then we split in the middle? Do that. Yeah, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you want to do your hangout time, get together. Yeah, get together, make your hangout time, and tell us to invite people. Invite people, invite people, invite people. Yes, because you're going to have more than 10 at the, the Cypress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's only one leader for Cypress, that means that there was only 10 or 12 students registered. Yeah, because there's more now. Now there's more. Mm -hmm. If there is more, we might have to take one of our assistant squad leaders and form a form a second squad. But we'll see on that first week. So depending on how big your squad is, this Wednesday, yeah. if, that, if this Wednesday there's 15 people or 20 people, that's, okay. that's when we'll know we got split. We got split. So be ready. Yeah, very split. And then we'll have one of these. So these are the squad, our assistant squad leaders here. And so if we have to split the one of these guys, well, so what do you guys keep an eye on these group? And if there's a lot, a lot of people, Jonathan or I will help make the division. Okay? Excited? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be good. This is a small commitment. It's just through December. Then we're done. And uh, there's only three events. One is actually a hangout event. This will be fun. Um, but it's a big part of what we do. It ends off every sermon series. So this is Living, ends this Wednesday. Our next sermon series is going to be awesome. It's called Monster Mash. Mm -hmm. yes. That's great. It's going to be awesome. Um, and then after that, we have what's after Monster Mash? Um, downside, downside up. Downside up. Downside up. Oh, and you're like, and then downside up. Downside up. Wow. Great meeting this Wednesday. Thank you. Bye. 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 No, it's okay. For somebody who doesn't speak Spanish. Yeah, I have to use Spanish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. I'm learning. I'm getting there. Miercoles. Sing. I'm with all the Spanish I know, so I'm with you, though. Guys, if there's not any questions, we're dismissed. You can take donuts home with you. You can take donuts.